What's up and welcome back everyone. Last video I showed you guys how I do uh, product research or one of the methods that I do product, product research and I showed you how I look at the Jungle Scout numbers and the way I analyze them. So that was part one. If you didn't see that one, definitely go check it out. I'll put a link to it here or here or in the description or all of them. So in this one, what I'm gonna do is show you once I find a product that I think could be a, a product I wanna sell, what I do next, what I do to make sure that this product I can sell it on Amazon, there's no patents, uh, there's actually the demand that I think there is because you know Jungle Scouts numbers are, are estimations. Most of the time they're true, but sometimes they're not. So this is what I do after the two steps that I showed you last time. So let's not waste any time, this is part two. That was step two. Step three is checking the fees. Now to check the fees of this product, to know if there's enough room to manufacture it and ship it and then still make a profit, Let's say I want to sell this product. You click on it, any one of your competitors, and then I have an extension here, this one, FBA calculator. You click on it, and then it shows you exactly the costs, or this would be the cost from the manufacturer. The price, you can even change it. The weight, according to what this seller had, and you can assume that yours would be very similar. Same with the size. Date first available, that could be some helpful information to you, but not for the price. Um, monthly storage fee would be that much. Pick and pack refer referral fee. Now these are the two, the three Amazon fees. And then it gives you the estimated monthly sales. I'm not sure why it says one. It should, gives you, it should give you a more uh, realistic number. Uh, the total FBA fee. So this would be the total of these. And then the margin impact. This means that this is how much you have left after those fees. So you have $7.69 and then you'd remove from them the shipping, the product costs from your supplier, whatever other costs that you have. And then the rest would be your profit. So let's say I can source this for a dollar and then ship it for another dollar <coughs> and then another dollar for some random fees. Let's put three here. Your profit would be 4.69. So this is a very easy way to calculate it. Number four, the history. So after I've found a potential product, after I've looked at the numbers and looked at the fees and thought, okay, maybe I can sell this and still make a profit, I look at the history of sales. So this one, okay, this is again another uh, extension. I'm not sure which one. Just get all the ones that I uh, mentioned in the description and you should be fine. I think, oh yeah, this is called Keepa. So this shows you the price over time and the rank over time. This is over three months. If I click all, this is since they started, I can see their history since they started selling. So if you see that it's that the rank is consistent the whole year, that's a good sign. That means that it's not a seasonal product. However, if you saw around maybe the summer, May to uh, August, if the ranking is only good here, then it's a summer product and you wouldn't wanna start selling it now. So what this shows me is that the price has always been the same. It's not an unusual price that I'm seeing and that the ranking has always been the same. Again, it's not an unusual ranking because of, I don't know, a rush of sales from uh, a giveaway maybe or again, seasonality as I explained before. Number five, 999. Now I've mentioned this in a previous video, but what this means exactly is it's a way to track exactly how many products, are, how many items they're selling per day. Your competitors are selling per day and you do that method over a few days and then you can estimate over the whole month. Now, Jungle Scout does that for you, but it's an estimation. This is this is a way of knowing exactly how many uh, they're selling per day. So how do you do this? All you do is go to add to cart and then click on cart, click on the quantity, click on 10 plus, type 999, update, and then Amazon tells you this seller has only 702 available which means that Amazon just told you exactly how much they have in their, in their inventory. So if you do that again the next day, the difference would be exactly how much they sold in that day. Now there's a few flaws with this method because sometimes Amazon would move around your, uh, your items between their warehouses. So, so one day it can show 700, another day it can show 750, another, uh, another day it can show 650. And that's not because they're selling 50 a day, but that's maybe because Amazon was moving those 50. Number six would be checking for patents and restrictions. Now this is a very important step because you don't wanna go through the trouble of starting a product, research, suppliers, blah, 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 and then 
you start selling and then someone contacts you saying you can't sell this product because it has a patent. So what you want to do is check for products on Google Patents. Usually you just type in the, what was it? Pocket um, chart. And then if you find something similar, then it is probably patented. The other way you can do it is just by Googling, go Googling, by Googling <laughs> pocket chart and then just typing patent next to it. That's a kind of an easier way to do it. See, maybe this is a patent for it. This is maybe a patent for it. Now, if it's not the exact patent, if it's something very, very specific, then you might be able to sell it. When it gets to, to, to this kind of, uh, you know, specific or not, you might want to ask a lawyer. The other one was restriction. I talked about that uh, at the beginning. Just check the list uh, that Amazon provides to you. And then number seven is speaking to China and making it and making it all happen. That's when you t start talking to suppliers. That's when you message about 20 suppliers, which is what I usually do on Alibaba.com. And um, that's when the negotiations happen. That's one of my uh, favorite parts because I like the neg ne negotiation part. And that's topic for another video. Honestly, this video is already long enough. So I hope you liked it. What I plan to do is show you, as I said, a series of, uh, you know, a series of this uh, first step here, research methods. I don't know how many exactly. I'm going to try to do five different research method videos. And then the rest is just going to be the same. So that's why I did this video first. So that when I show you each one of these videos, you know what to do after. Make sense? Hopefully it does. So this is the end of the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I need three things from you. One, join the contest. Do what I said in the beginning, uh, like and comment, blah, blah, blah. And I'll let you know if you win next time. If you really want that call with me and you didn't win the contest, then there's a link below where you can schedule a call, a call with me. This is the first time that I do this, so I hope uh, it goes uh, as you know well as I imagine. And number two is please subscribe if you want to see the rest of this series. I hope you liked this video. If you did, leave a thumbs up. And number three, nothing. I lied. That's it. Peace.